Hi, I'm Keith Deason, and I'm going to show you how I make acrylic pour style art using only acrylic paint and water. No crazy additives. So acrylic pours are a very popular, very simple technique for creating very intricate and beautiful pieces of art. In every other video and every other set of instructions I've seen for this method, it always requires some sort of expensive store-bought additive or something weird like silicone oil that really nobody has lying around. So here's how I ended up getting some pretty impressive results without any of that nonsense. So you prep your colors and you get your acrylic paint, which is soluble in water. And you work up a palette. You get any of the colors you want to use. You can mix your own, you can use the ones straight out of the bottle like I'm doing here. And you mix each color with a different amount of water to make a different viscosity for each color you're going to use. The final result of the technique is a marbled pattern or kind of a spider webby effect, which is a result of the paints no longer being able to mix together on the surface. So for example, the very thinned out white that I'm pouring right now will not mix with the much thicker blue that I'm going to lay down later. Later, when we start tilting the canvas, the thicker paints will stay in place. The thinner paints will stretch out in between the colors and fill in some of the gaps and create that marbling pattern I was talking about. Putting thick paints on top of thin paints and vice versa in layers will also aid in the desired effect later on. And I say later on because I know this looks like a big old mess right now, and you're not wrong. It's a big old mess right now. So normally, when you see people doing this technique on videos, they don't really explain the thinking behind it or really even kind of the science behind it. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of that for you now so you have a better understanding of what's going on. And understanding makes you a better artist and a better creator because you can take that understanding and apply it to different situations and different inspirations to create new art and new projects and really just do good work. My personal goal for this art project and this experiment is to get a very finely detailed marbling pattern that you have to get up close to really see well. A lot of the time when you see the acrylic pores, they're made for videos and they're made very big, very bold with very contrasty colors and just really large color fields. I will be turning this into a piece of art when I'm done, which will be a landscape, and you'll see that as part of this video. So I'm also trying to render a scene when I'm moving around the color like I'm doing now. And as you can see, like I explained, the thinner colors are running much more quickly than the thicker colors, forming drips and drops and swirl patterns as I tilt the canvas around. And I could have done a better job facing the camera while I was doing all this, but like I said, I had a goal to achieve, and the video is, is sort of secondary to what's going on. So here's a fun technique that I haven't seen anybody exploring really in uh, this genre of work, and it's to take a stylus or a palette knife like I'm doing here, and score it through the painting and see if you can reveal the layers or uh, manipulate the flow. I'm going to throw in some black paint here, very thin, to get some little fine detail in there, and I added too much so here's me scraping it off and what I learned right there scraping it off with the palette knife is that you can kind of roll the pattern onto the palette knife as you pick it up off the canvas so as you scrape like that you'll end up with a little marbled blob of paint that looks like something called Fordite f-o-r-d-i-t-e for you googling types you should look that up because it's really cool here it is again and then you can move it around and spread it and kind of pick up a piece of the pattern from one area and move it to another so I've done paintings like this before, and I typically rendered the background, but when I saw the acrylic pour technique, I immediately thought I could use it in my style of work to make a much, much more interesting background than I could with a paintbrush in a typical style. That top left yellow corner is going to be sky, so I'm adding some swirly kind of cloudiness up in there with the palette knife. Really, really aping Van Gogh on that one. And so long as the paint is still wet enough, after you are done with the palette knife, all those kind of scrape marks will fill themselves back in and, and self-level. And you can see how wet the paint still is, even a couple hours into the process. Acrylic paint normally would have dried up by now, but because we mixed in so much water, it stays nice and fluid for us to work with. I'm going to add a bit more thin white to the top to kind of even out this really dark blue area here and we're going to let that swirl around so you can see that even though the paint's been on here for a while and there's so many layers of paint you still get these really great runs that you can control by tilting the canvas around and all these drips and drops on the surface of the canvas will self-level as it dries because we thinned it out with water so much 
Now, here I just decided to see what would happen if I used a torch to kind of go over the top and make sure there's no air bubbles in the paint, and it really didn't do anything. This is something that the people in the other videos who use the silicone oil and stuff do to kind of make bubbles and open up the surface tension, but really with this method, it doesn't matter. It ends up with me having to pop bubbles with a palette knife for about 20 minutes. And there's a few more areas that I want to manipulate, but the paint has gotten a little thicker after a few hours, so I'm adding some water back into the mix in a couple of spots so that when I tilt it, it goes back to being a little more runny. And here we have it all dried up. Now you can see among the marbling that you'd expect from this technique, also these streaks and scratches and kind of feather patterns that I got from manipulating the colors with the palette knife. This is a technique I gleaned from watching the process of marbling paper that used to be used in bookmaking. Many of those traditional techniques and methods are now used in what's called hydrographics or hydro dipping. So paper marbling and hydro dipping, two things you should definitely look up because they're fantastic to watch. I use these micron felt tip pens to make the foregrounds of my artworks, which really offsets them from the background of the color field. There's no pencil sketches or projectors here. To get started, I use a series of dots to kind of line up the major landmarks I'm going to be drawing straight from an image that I have saved on my phone. I use the image as a reference to remember exactly what was in that scene, but for the most part, I am painting from memory, from the feeling of being in that place at that time. This adds a layer of eeriness and kind of an unsettling feeling to the whole scene that I'm rendering. Like here, rather than trying to put a lamppost in perfect perspective and render it exactly right, I am trying to evoke the feeling that I got through my memory of that lamppost at that time in the scene. And I used to primarily illustrate comics and do line drawings, so this is really a natural thing for me. I can use my hands to measure it out, I can do it from eye and from memory without much of an issue. And this really shows the look I'm going for with this work, which is to have this thin, black, dark frontal field of vision overlaying on that really colorful, swirly, organic background. When I see people doing acrylic pours and I see people doing the videos for acrylic pours, I see a lot of people doing the thing that they watched in the video. And that's cool. That's the way to learn stuff. But I think once you've learned something, even while you're learning it, you should try to apply it to different ideas that you might have. I mean, that's essentially creativity, right? Otherwise, we're just copying. I mean, even just like this video. I didn't want to just make another video showing you how to do an acrylic pour. I wanted to show you another way to approach that same concept from a different angle. You know, you take a concept and you add a little bit here and you take away a little bit there and suddenly it becomes your own. It becomes your own thing. And that's originality and that's creativity. And that's what we should be striving for. And after I'm done ranting about creativity and uh, originality, I make a tree that looks very much like a tree from a Van Gogh painting. And that's cool too, that's just called inspiration. Here's the ink work mostly done, you can see the landscape really taking shape here and what I'm going for. After this I'm probably going to cut to it being finished because otherwise this would be like a 20 hour video. And also, really, I'm using my phone to film it, and not having your phone when you're doing this much work can really make it tedious. I am addicted to my phone, I need it in my hands, and not on a tripod next to me, for your sake. And the final painting. Wait, nope, it was upside down. And the final painting. And I'm really proud of it, and I want to hang it up. So how we do that? With some custom hanging hardware. Now don't worry, this ruler is already broken on the other side and pretty much useless as a tool. But I never throw anything out for situations just like this. Just give it a little heat to soften it up. That's a little too much heat, quench it really quickly. Okay, that's good. This is made of aluminum by the way, it's not steel. This is why it's so easy to manipulate and work with. Gotta bend it into the right shape. I drilled a hole and lost the footage, but here I am widening the bottom of that hole into a taper. And here I am launching it across the shot for three points. Use a round file to clean up the hole. 
or some sandpaper if that's what you got. Drill holes for the screws that are going to hold it to the back of the work. Drill slightly wider holes because you misjudged the size of your screws. There we have it. Now we get to attach it. This part's easy. You want the screw hole of your hardware to be at the exact center of your work. And not really the center measured wise, but the, the gravitational center where it will be balanced the best. Screw it in and hang it up. So thanks for watching this video. If it inspired you, you have different ideas or something I could have done different or something you learned, leave me a comment. If you like what I'm doing here and you want to see more, subscribe. It's really that simple. Later, makers.